First off, I have to thank John Gordon. <clears throat> when uh, they say that you have to pick somebody to uh, introduce you, and he has to be a member of the Twins Hall of Fame, it was an easy decision. John and I started with the Twins the same year, and we were both either smart or lucky, one of the two, because we won the World Series that year. John has always, throughout his whole career, been available to help the Twins in the, in the community, speaking to groups, attending activities, and thank you so much for all of that, John. I also want to congratulate Joe Nathan, and I was trying to think, so what can I say about Joe? When you're the best, you just say, Joe, you're the best. <laughs> Thank you. The Holla team is a special organization and a special group of people headed by the right person. When you say Rod Carew, who's the chairman, to a baseball fan, that's all you have to say. Because when you mention his name, they immediately think, this guy steals home plate a lot, gets more hits than anybody else, an outstanding defensive player. He's smart and he's very articulate. He is the perfect person to be the chairman. Also need to mention Tom Kelly. He has agreed to catch the pitch that I will throw later. So who says Tom's not willing to take a chance? I, uh, I don't know where it'll end up, but I do know at my age, it's lost a lot of velocity, Tom, so don't worry too much. Tom has the unique ability to say a lot and only use a few words. One example of that is Tom always said, respect the game. Every player who ever played for Tom Kelly knows what that means, and it means a lot. It means if you're playing and you hit a ground ball, you run it out to first base. You come to the ballpark prepared to play because the fans pay good money to watch you, and on and on. It's a few words, but it has a great deal of meaning, and he has other things like that, too. Sadly, we need to remember a couple members of the Hall of Fame who are no longer with us. Two of those are players that in their time were the face of the franchise, Armin Killebrew and Kirby Puckett. <clears throat> I need to talk a little bit about the Polad family because for me, it all started with Carl Polat. He hired me. Shortly after, it became Carl and Eloise. Soon after that, we became friends. And the friendship became more important than the working relationship. Carl's commitment to the twins is legendary, noted by his presence in the Twins Hall of Fame. He was committed to win and did 1987-1991 World Series and he made Kirby Puckett a twin for life. Fortunately, Carl and Eloise had a good family, a great family. Their sons, Jim, Bob, and Bill, have picked up the torch and have done extremely well. Jim Polad takes credit for nothing and deserves credit for so much. When we were starting to build the ballpark, he said, make it nice. Oh, what does that mean? 
but he contributed so much thought and inspiration that it, he had a lot to do with making it nice. I recall one day when we went to see Jim and we had some changes that we wanted to make to the construction of the ballpark. We had 22 change orders, all of them add-ons, all of them costing a lot of money. So we had a meeting. Good thing about working with Jim and Carl, you didn't have a lot of meetings, but we had a meeting on this. So I start going through the changes that we wanted to make, and like I said, there were 22 of them. I got to about number 10 or 11, something like that, and Jim could see the direction that it was going. So he ended the meeting by saying, do them all. That was the end of the meeting, and we did. We wanted to create a landmark, iconic ballpark, and Jim's contribution helped make that happen. Everyone says that they had help in getting here. I think I needed more than most. You must have the support of your family. Phyllis, my wife, provided most of that, but I will tell you this. She always tries to keep you grounded. So I get hired, and they make something out of that. I came home, said, well, what did you think? And she said, when you get hired on TV, you get fired on TV. <laughs> True story. I also had the support of my family, including daughters Lynn Graff and Diane Albrecht. Grandson Scott Graff, and he's here with his Jeff Ruccini. Diane and grandson Scott, Al Scott Albrecht, grandson Patrick Wenzel, Maggie Margaret Wenzel, and great grandsons and Ethan Wenzel. He just finished playing his baseball for this summer. You also need support from your colleagues, Twins Front Office. That was mostly orchestrated by Dave St. Peter, who was by then president of the Minnesota Twins. He really encouraged all of the people, although they didn't need a lot, to be involved with the construction, design, and development of Target Field. One person that I need to single out among the many is my 20-year assistant, Joni, <coughs> Joni Besser. Joni managed our construction office single-handedly. She could do it all, and she did. Baseball leadership is really important because that's why we're here. For me, that was headed up by Andy McPhail, and Andy had a team that included Bob Gebhardt, Terry Ryan, and Billy Smith. I think Andy did a good job because all of them went on to become general managers. The team that helped Target Field become a reality was our partner, number one, Hennepin County. And for that period of time, Mike Opat became the face of Hennepin County and a really, really strong supporter without whom we wouldn't have been able to do this. So thank you so much for that, Mike. Others making significant contributions that need to be recognized include Bob Starkey, who is now the chief financial officer of Major League Baseball. And for us, he also 
organized all of our finances and kept track of everything. He was involved in strategy, and he even wrote books. Nobody read the books, Bob. But we did, but we did provide executive summaries included what were in them. Another person who made major, major contributions was our legal counsel, Ralph Stranges, and so much more. When you'd have a meeting, and Ralph was at most of them, he provided energy to the meeting. He lighted up. He was funny. He knew what to do, and he did it. In the legislative area, we had the best government relation person you could get. His name is Ross Kramer. Ross will raise the flag here lately, later, because you need to be a veteran to do that. Ross is a veteran unlike most. Helicopter pilot in Vietnam, has numerous medals from the Air Force. <clears throat> After completing his military career, he became a pilot captain for Northwest Airlines and went to law school. I don't know where he found the time to do that, but he did. He's quite a guy, very remarkable. Moving on with more, I'll go back to Dave St. Peter, because he personally was more involved than others. He attended every meeting and played a major role in making Target Field what it is today. The architects for Target Field were populist architects, and the chief architect was Earl Santee. Earl had vision, and fortunately for us, when problems came up, he could solve the problems. We were also blessed by having what, in my view, is the best construction company in the country. And they're here, they're right from here, Mortensen. Mortensen built this on time, ahead of schedule, and the quality of workmanship is better than most around the major leagues, believe me. That's partly, partly deserved for that, is their construction superintendent. His name is Dave Mansell. Dave Mansell at times was supervising 900 workers, and he could be rather colorful at the time as well. The Metrodome, while serving the state of Minnesota well, also earned its reputation for providing home field advantage. It was great when we won two World Series there. But it was always our dream to present baseball the way it was meant to be presented, outdoors, on real grass, in a best-in-class ballpark. I stand here today knowing that the persistence and collaboration required to withstand Minnesota's decade-long ballpark debate was well worth it. Target Field was built for the future of Twins baseball. I know that the future is bright for the Twins organization. We are in good hands with Derek Falvey, Thad, Le Thad Levine, and Rocco Baldelli leading our baseball team. The ballpark helped ensure the viability of Twins baseball for future generations. It is not only an iconic landmark for the city and state, most importantly, it does what ballparks do best. It brings community together. Looking back on my career, everything we accomplished be it winning the World Series, building Target Field, and so many other things, we were always supported 
by the Polad family, driven by the talented men and women across the Twins organization, and most importantly, inspired by our fans. Thank you for this incredible honor. It is a long way from the bleachers of Metropolitan Stadium, watching Rod and Harmon and Tony and others to being here today. I am humbled and honored to be part of the Minnesota Twins Hall of Fame. Thank you.